the uh, state leader, minority leader of the Republican Party in the state house. That is Representative Themis Claritas of the 114th Assembly District. Representative, so good to see you. Good morning. Nice to see you indeed. Thank you so much for stopping by. I should tell everybody that you represent, your district represents the towns of Derby, Orange, and Woodbridge. Yes. Beautiful towns. And Love it there. Uh, I bet you do. Now, uh, I want you to talk about, if you don't mind, not just the district that you represent, but because you are the minority leader, let's let's sort of take a broader brush look at what's going on with the state of Connecticut. We have, what, about seven weeks left in the legislative session, roughly, <laughs> uh, depending on how it plays. Um, so there's not much time left to do the things that need to get done. And there still seems to be, unfortunately, a fair amount of disagreement between the two parties about how to move forward. So I'll give you first a chance to give me your overview of that and then we'll dig into some of the details of it we're going to get there we always do but how, how do you see us getting there well i always say if i knew how we were going to get there i'd be a mind reader and i would have another job probably but uh, unfortunately the way session works is most of the things happen in the last couple weeks of session and mm -hmm. so there's is about seven weeks or so to go and uh there's still plenty of time in, in legislative time, actually. We have, as most people know, a very big budget deficit for the next two years again, three and a half billion dollars, which is not much different than it has been in the past several years and that it will be in the next coming few years. Um, so that's why it's been so difficult to get budgets in the past few years, because there's so much money that we need to find and where do people want to take it from whether it's spending cuts, whether it's uh, union contracts, whether it's um, elimination of programs, and, and trying to put more money into pro other programs that we know should be our priority. So the state legislature is duty-bound to balance the budget and to put us in a position to move forward in a, in a proper fashion. Yet, every time we do this, we seem to have no end of difficulty. Is it because there are philosophical differences? What do you think is ultimately the reason why we have so much trouble doing this? When you say trouble, do you mean why do we have so much trouble getting to a budget? Yes. Well, listen, you have different two different political parties. You have people that represent all different parts of the state. You have suburban districts, uh, rural districts, urban districts. You have people that come from different backgrounds. We have a citizen's legislature, which means it's technically part-time, although I've never, most of my full-time jobs take less time than this part-time job. Um, people have different perspectives. You know, it depends on what your experiences have been, what, what things you think are important. So when you put all of that together, that's why, I mean, I think any legislature, you know, we see what happens in Congress, which is, which is a shame on so many levels because I think that's embarrassing in a lot of ways. But that's why it's difficult to, to, find, to find common ground. But remember, it wasn't this difficult when we had surpluses. It's only well, difficult because we can't find money. Yes. That's why it's difficult. It's not because of the different perspectives of people or where they're from. It's because there's not enough money to go around, and there's a lot of money uh, deficit-wise. So a lot of people listening to us would say, if they were able to be here and, and chat with you, they'd say, okay. Uh, I, I get it. We don't have enough money. If if this were my household, I would have to find a way to, to do this. I, I it, It's like I can make it up. So we have to find a way to do it, don't we? Yes, we do. And that's, that's I mean, you, you're using my talking points that whether it's your home or any small business with one or two employees or five or six employees or a big business, whatever the case may be, you have to figure out how much money is coming in and how much money is going out and those two better be at the very least even mm -hmm. but in state government they don't they're never even now when you say we have to have a balanced budget we do by law but there's a lot of ways to balance a budget on paper but what that means and what that looks like is the problem you know the the things that are funded the things that are not funded just as importantly the things that are funded that people don't use the things that we believe are priorities that you may be not believe are priorities, and, and that's why it becomes difficult. I was talking with an uh, eminent economist recently about the state of Connecticut's 
uh, budget situation, and and he said to me, "There is no choice. There needs to be more revenue." Would you agree with that? No, I wouldn't. You know what we've heard year after year is our problem is we don't have enough money and we have too many expenses. Mm -hmm. Now, could we use more revenue? Would that would that make it easy? Of course. I mean, no matter how well you're doing your household, you can always use more revenue. Right. right. That's that's never. I don't think that's the question that should be asked. I think the question that should be asked is, what are our priorities as state government? And we have believed very strongly in the past few years, um, at least the House and Senate Republican caucuses, that we have to figure out what our priorities are as state government. We believe that they're the elderly. We believe their education. We believe their children. We believe they're the intellectually and developmentally disabled population. We believe they're people that need our help the most, the most vulnerable of the state. That's what our job needs to be. And if that is going to be outside of those parameters, health and safety, mm -hmm. you know, roads, um, uh, law enforcement, things that protect us, outside of that, when you face huge budgets like budget deficits like this, other things have to fall by the wayside until you get your fiscal house in order. And unless we're going to get that fiscal house in order by making serious changes to the structure of Connecticut, it will never be fixed. Now, our, your friends across the aisle have various proposals pending uh, that would potentially raise revenue. Uh, they don't have so many proposals pending that would reduce spending so far as I can tell uh, if you don't mind we'll, we'll 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 flip through a couple of them one that uh, a leader of the uh, Democrats had said to me right here on the air that he thought was going to be a, a very uh, important one for the state legalizing marijuana and already I can see you're not happy about my I'm asking. not rocking though I'm no, just you're not rocking. my eyes and sighing <laughs> okay well, I'm a sire. go ahead sigh a, a sigh <laughs> and and I definitely get it. It's an illegal drug that we are talking about legalizing. And yes, we could spend hours, of course, talking about the psychological and the emotional and all of the stuff that goes with that. We might even want to spend a few minutes talking about the unintended consequences. Children with uh, uh, showing up in school, as has happened in Colorado, for example, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, stoned. Uh, those were unintended consequences. Uh, but they I, should be they should be foreseeable. In, indeed, especially difference. since other states are experiencing them. So, as the leader of the Republicans, where are you with this? Well, we haven't caucused this issue, but I know that the major the majority, at least if not all, of our caucus does not support this um, issue. Like I said, I we haven't talked about it specifically. Um, so I'm not it would bring in a lot of money, or so they say. I'm not represent what every member thinks, but I know the large majority feels this way. This is going back to money, right? Yeah. And it's, in it's interesting that when you hear people that are proponents of it, there are some people that just believe it should be legal because they want to smoke pot all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, they, and a lot of them just say it. But the majority of the times you hear elected officials talking about legalizing marijuana, you hear them say the following things, what you just said. It brings in a lot of money. We're making a major public health and public policy decision based on the fact that they cannot but balance their budget properly in a reasonable and responsible way. That's all this is about. Mm -hmm. Every time mm -hmm. I have heard my colleagues talk about legalizing marijuana, it's like, well, it can bring in all this money. First, if you're going to do something this major and other states have done it first, you better darn well wait long enough and see what the consequences of it are. We all talked about the f number one, there is, it is not like alcohol because you can do a, a test for alcohol when you're driving. The cops can go right up to the car and do it right then and there. There is a test for driving while impaired with marijuana, but you have to actually take the person to the hospital. Can you imagine every cop that stops somebody that gives them a blow test for alcohol and then they're, they're, they don't have any alcohol in it, and then they have to take them to the hospital, get a blood test, you know, do all of this stuff. It's, it's, it's not workable. It is, it's not something that anybody can do. Right, number two, property values have gone down in some of these states. All the kids that are coming to school high because they're like, listen, it's legal. So if it's legal, why can't we do it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the notion of that. And at the same time that the state of Connecticut, the Democrat legislators are pushing to legalize marijuana. They're at the same time 
pushing very hard to increase penalties for minors vaping. They're True. at the same time put, trying to put taxes on sugary drinks. They're at the same time the governor is trying to increase your sales tax on car seats, on Little League registration, on safety helmets for bikes. So which one is it? Are you trying to make people healthier or are you trying to just have a revenue grab? I say it's the latter, and I think it's very clear that that's what it is. Do you think it has a chance this year, or are even the Democrats backing off in some ways? Um, it has more of a chance this year than it had before because of the makeup of the legislature, but if you look at the vote count that came out of the Judiciary Committee, it only passed by two votes, and considering there's a lot more than two more Democrats mm -hmm. on the Judiciary Committee, uh, I think that that's very, that very serious concerns for the passage of the bill, and I hope that there are enough Democrats that are concerned enough and don't have enough answers to at least do the right thing and, and, push, and push this off another year at least. Uh, so we were talking before the break about some of the revenue ideas that are uh, uh, floating around up there in the House in the last weeks of the session. Uh, I have to ask you, I have no choice but to ask you because everybody is talking about two other ones. Uh, we'll do quickly sports betting. Yes? No? Who cares? I, I, I'm not against it. I, I, once again, I think it's something that we have to just make sure we do, we do correctly. Um, we had a lot of negotiations on it last year. In fact, the last time we met as leaders on it was with Governor Malloy in the late summer, mm -hmm. early fall. And, and there was a tentative proposal that s still needed some changes. Um, and we decided at the time that, you know, within two months there would be a new legislature and a new governor. So we should just wait and, and, and until that happened. Um, I'm not against it, but I just think it needs to be done the right way. I think we need to make sure we protect... Um, kids. We need to protect our state um, college sports, which is important in the state. And what we people don't understand in Connecticut that's different than the other states is we have we have the Indian casinos to deal with. So it's not just the governor and the legislature that have to make this decision. There's this huge other group of people that have a vested interest in it and, mm -hmm. and by the way, can stop us from doing things. They have, they have actual control over it because of the compact uh, with the state. All right. So that one you would say I you know I, I've actually been waiting for us to have conversations about it I, th I would assume that we will soon um, this session but clearly we have tolls and everything else and taxes and things are going on that people are more concerned about right now all right let's let's go to those then uh, we have a governor now who uh, ran on the notion that uh, he would put tolls on trucks and uh, he won the seat uh, took office and said, well, I kind of made a mistake there. I think we should put tolls on everything. Uh, I, I believe you and, and my good friend Senator Fasano are not keen on that idea. Uh, I think that would be fair to say. So we'll start with that simple question. Tolls, yes or no? No. Because they're not necessary. You know, what you have heard from the governor and the Democrats in the legislature is that that is the only way we can fund transportation and I think everybody agrees transportation needs to be funded properly but there is an alternative to it uh, we call it prioritized progress and it is a way to fund transportation immediately and a sustainable and a predictable manner now is it going to build every single project every person would like and need no but that's not the job of government to make sure that anybody anytime anybody utters a word about a project that we make sure that that's done. It's about prioritizing safety of roads and bridges and making sure that projects are done in a way that moves the state forward. You look at the toll proposal, besides the fact it's a billion dollars, and whether we have 82 tolls or 55 tolls or 50 tolls or two tolls, it's still a billion dollars. That's what people are not understanding because they're not telling you that. Well, let's do a little detail on that. Uh, First of all, I think what a lot of people don't realize is even if you were to pass them, they wouldn't go into effect for several years because you've got to do the studies, right. you've, got to, you've got to build the gantries, you've got to put the uh, plates out there, you've got to do all of those things before you get a penny, right? Right. I mean, it's going to be four to five years easily before we're, we will get any money. The scarier part right now is the governor's proposal recently has been to have a public-private partnership um, get involved and then take the money that we think we're going to get from tolls and leverage it to these groups to, t to basically take out another loan. 
So the idea would be borrow the money, uh, anticipatory borrowing. That is to say, you have money. I come to you and say, well, we're going to have tolls in 2023. So, and we know that that will bring in a lot of money. So you lend me the money now and I'll pay you back then. Is that the right. idea? And, and what's worse is our proposals are, bo are borrowing the money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we have heard from our colleagues on the other side of the island, the governor, that that's just putting the money on the credit card. Well, in, in a state, what we call borrowing is we call it bonding. Mm -hmm. So we can borrow a certain amount of money. Now, we're very proud uh, in the last two years with our bipartisan budgets that we have pushed forward very fiscally responsible proposals like bonding caps and spending caps, things that you have in your house. You don't call them that, but you know, this mm -hmm. is all I can borrow and this is all I can afford to spend. Well, in the state, we call them a bond cap and a spending cap. And because of us, we have those now. So right now, that's $2 billion. Now, when you went to buy your house, you didn't just go in and hand them $200,000 in cash, right? Uh, you borrowed yeah. it. Yeah. Even if you have that money to spend, you don't pay it in cash because it's responsible borrowing, right? Because you figure out, I can afford to pay this back, so this is how much money I can take, take out because it's a capital project, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we do as a state. So there is responsible borrowing. There's no question about it, but what's gone on in the past several years in the state has been irresponsible borrowing. We've had the highest borrowing ever in the state of Connecticut's history. So our proposal is borrow is borrowing this money, bonding it, but also being able to fund in that borrowing clean water fund, school construction, Yukon, uh, bioscience projects, um, small town economic assistance uh, grants, Urban Act grants, things that are important. So we're, it's prioritizing, right? Back to what is state government, what should it do? Helping the people we need the most and for their health and safety. And obviously we believe that transportation is that. What the Democrats want to do is they want to take a billion dollars out of your pocket for tolls and then borrow two billion dollars. And now the governor wants to leverage the toll money to do this other little scheme. So prioritize progress, which is what you call your right, the, the Republican, Republican plan. alternative. So how would that work? Well, give me some. Would you move bonding money around? Would you would you defer certain projects? How no, would you do? What it? we would do is right now we have special tax obligation bonds that we have. We would rem keep those would remain the same, and then we would have our funding for transportation, which is about $65 billion in 30 years. So it's a long-term plan, and you would take that, and then we'd keep the federal funding that we have. And that money would, it would equal, you know, like $2.1 billion every year, going for out for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And it, we would be able to use it immediately. But the couple things, the reason why this is better than tolls, and why tolls are not necessary is we could use it immediately. We can start fixing those roads and bridges that are in disrepair. We can start planning transportation projects that we need, number one. Number two, it's predictable. You know we're getting this much money from the feds. We're putting this much money in from the state, and this is what you're going to get. The last um, commissioner of transportation made a public statement that said, we have told the state we need about $63 billion in the next 30 years to fund transportation, and we are not getting that money year after year. So we are giving them the money they need, but in a responsible way while still doing other things we need to do for the state how, and not taking a billion dollars out of your pocket. How do you respond to the argument that about 40% of the miles driven in the state of Connecticut are driven by vehicles that are not Connecticut vehicles that come through the state, out-of-state vehicles? Well, I mean, listen, there's no question there's... A, in every state, there's there's cars that are coming through that aren't in the state. But all the estimates that we've seen are 60 to 70 percent of that one billion dollars will be paid by Connecticut residents. Now we've heard the comparisons between Massachusetts and New York and Connecticut. Well, Massachusetts and New York have it. Why can't we? Well, there are differences. If you want to compare Connecticut to different states, it's got to be apples to apples, not right. apples to oranges. Go ahead. We have a gas tax, a gross receipts tax, and we have a car tax in Connecticut. Correct? Yes, we do. New York does not have a car tax, and Massachusetts does not have a gross receipts tax. So right from the start, they do not have as many taxes that go to their roads as we do. Number two, Massachusetts is twice as big as us in land mass and has twice as much in population. They only toll one road, and I believe they take in half a billion dollars, give or take, on that one road. So it is, do it is done in a completely different way that you cannot compare it. It is not the same. 
and many because we get federal funding for our transportation because we don't have tolls right now every person that's driving through that state in their own way is paying into the state of Connecticut okay fair enough from a practical point of view do you think that a, some sort of merging of the two ideas would make make a passable plan that is to say some of what you call prioritized progress and some of what he calls responsible tolling is there a hybrid plan here no pun intended well here's the problem with that i heard the governor on the on a tv show this weekend talking about how you know he so badly wants the republicans to the table and he doesn't know why we're not at the table well again an untruth that people need to understand I know that Senator Fasano talks to the governor on a regular basis. I talk to the governor on a regular basis. We have many conversations. We can all pick up the phone at any time. Mm -hmm. So we are already having conversations. And we've proven that we can work in a bipartisan way because, but for us, we wouldn't have had a bipartisan budget two years ago. So any notion that we're sitting there, sitting in the corner with our arms crossed, you know, is, is completely false. But there are many things we can all agree to compromise on which we did in those budgets. And we do it every day, quite frankly. But there are some things that there's no gray area on. And tolls is one of them for us, and here's why. Because when you hear this whole notion of how many toll gantries, it's like when you go to, to a carnival and you spin the wheel to figure out which stuffed animal you're going to get. That's basically how they figure out how many toll gantries. Because it changes every other week. Mm -hmm. But the money remains the same. The billion dollars remains the same. That's what people are understanding. So if they're going to take a billion dollars, you know, out of your pocket or 700 million, whatever the percentage is of in-state residents, it doesn't matter if there's 80 or there's 50. The money remains the same. And that's the shame of it here. Because when asked, well, how do you know in the Transportation Committee, how do we know what we're voting for since there's no plan on the table? It changes every couple of weeks. Oh, well, you have to vote on it. And then we'll get it out of the House and the Senate, and then the governor will sign it, and then it'll go to the Transportation Department, and they'll figure out the plan. Who ever heard of such a thing? Who ever heard of that? Here's the reality. You all vote for your state reps and state senators because you want them to make difficult decisions, and that's a difficult decision. But in no way, shape, or form should, that, should that, those decisions be put on a department head. So it doesn't seem like we're going to get Republican support for that. Is it going to pass anyway? You know, I think it depends. There's so much pressure. We've been going around the state doing toll forums in mm -hmm. our districts, and mm -hmm. we've gotten anywhere from, you know, 50 to 250 people at each one, which is a lot of people when you're talking about people with their families and their jobs and their activities um, coming out at 6 or 7 at night, and it's because people are so irate about this. And... I think that right now there's more pressure than there's ever been on legislators to not vote for this. I hope it does not pass. I think it's a sad state of affairs for the state when you can, the people that are promoting it have never done, have you seen anybody do a pro toll forum? <laughs> anybody? If no. they felt so strongly about their position that that was the only way and it was a responsible way to do it, they'd be all over the state doing it like we've been doing the anti-toll forums and showing what our alternative plan is. Not one person has. They go home at night and say their prayers and hope to God that people aren't paying enough attention to put pressure on their legislators to not vote for this. And that's what's going on. Because if I strongly believe in something, I'm going to go out there and fight for it. And that's what we do every day. They're not fighting for anything. They're just, they just want the easy way out and they want to take more money out of your pocket. 